Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back here to the Ray Esports Racing League here on Apex Racing TV. My name is Ron Mons. Joining me in the commentary booth is Charles Bichel. And in the virtual production hall are we have our old buddy Joshua Wilkie. Now, we welcome you all to round two of the season. Coming to you tonight at Sebring, but unlike most series that run here at this track on the full international layout, tonight we're partying on the club layout. Now, for full transparency, folks, this track is actually being used tonight as a little bit of an experiment here for the series. And I'm really interested to see how this works. Now, Charles, we were kind of talking before the start of this broadcast about what we may see here from this racing. Tight quarters racing, 11 corners crammed into this less than two mile long racetrack. It's a real interesting race that we have in store for tonight on an interesting layout as well. So what are your thoughts running here on the Shoren layout of Sebring? Well, it'll be interesting, Ron, uh, because you know, anytime we go to a track uh, or a track configuration that's that's not well known or, or often used, uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve. So, uh, you know, most of the section as you're watching the uh, cars on track, uh, most of the track they pretty much know. As we're coming around here through turn six, we're heading down the straight, uh, which is actually, I believe, the start of the lap, uh, which is at the mobile one sign there. Um, to take you to the first corner, actually, is the hairpin, which is the turn seven on the international lap. Uh, and then you'll come around through here and go through Collier and Cunningham and then Tower. Uh, and then somewhere between Tower and the next set of corners, you'll make a right-hand turn uh, into into the unknown. So that'll be a little bit of a, a little bit of a challenge for these drivers. They've been out practicing, obviously, but it's still, you know, it takes a little time to find the fastest line uh, through a new section of track. So we'll see how that all works out. 
have seen plenty of drivers get caught out by this circuit already. We're still riding on board with Wayne Buttermore heading into turn number five, Tower Bend. And this is an interesting corner here on the layout, regardless of where you're running here and going into this small little cut here into the circuit. And you can see Wayne Buttermore going for a spin. That corner has caught out plenty of drivers. That concrete going through turn number six here on this club layout is patchier than my face when I was 14. So it's really tricky to try and find the grip inconsistent surfaces inconsistent level of grip and that's going to catch out plenty of drivers here in this race it's an unknown quantity to plenty of these drivers i was kind of joking before this broadcast started about how the only racing i'd ever done at the sebring club as we see another car spinning in the back of shot following j king but the only racing i've really done here at this track in i racing is just running usf 2000 ai races where the fuel was limited to about two gallons so you'd have to pit about every lap and a half it was a very fun race but also very uh, very interesting as well. I think we'll probably use the term interesting a lot through at this broadcast here. We're following Jay King, who's currently at the front of the Formula Fords as things stand at the moment about halfway through this qualifying session. And we're coming up to what is the start-finish line now. So it's actually coming out of Fangio. Turn number 11 is when they grab the, uh, the start-finish line. And you can see farther off there to the right is actually the pit entry here. This circuit is not used a whole lot in the real-life world and not really used in the sim either. Either. I think for all three of us, both myself, my colleague Charles in the commentary booth, and our producer Josh, this is our first time doing any sort of broadcast here at this Sebring Club Labs. It's a little bit of an unknown quantity to the drivers and us as well here on this broadcast. However, if you ask many IndyCar drivers, it is not an unknown quantity. The series uses this track as actually a street circuit testing all throughout the season, whether it be during the actual IndyCar season, during the spring and summer months, or actually whether it be during the autumn and winter winter as well. The circuit is used quite a lot by them to test out their suspension components before they head to tracks like St. Pete and Long Beach on the IndyCar calendar. But here with the Formula Vs and the Formula Fords, traffic is a big factor here in this qualifying session as we saw Jay King overtake about three or four cars going down this pseudo back straight away here on this, cl on this club layout. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it, once again, we just, it's a little bit of a challenge. I, even I was struggling a little bit just trying to figure out where the start finish line was. So uh, a little bit of learning from everybody tonight. Yeah, this is a, uh, I can imagine this is probably one of the least race tracks that we'll visit all throughout the season. And I think still it's going to be a unique one here on this calendar. One of the shortest as well at only 1.75 miles. So we'll just have to see what kind of racing that we have in store for us tonight. This is Michelle Lynn. We're riding on board with her. She just went through Tower Bend about to go into turn number six. And I was spying around a little bit of espionage when I joined the session earlier on this evening. And I was hearing what's some of the drivers were saying and one of the main factors here was coming through turn number eight if you're in these formula v's which seem to be allergic to any sort of curb that is the curb of doom i heard it described as so that is going to be a curb that even the formula four drivers will try not to touch with a 10 foot pole but speaking of michelle lynn she was actually saying that she was very confident she didn't do a whole lot of, uh, she hadn't, hadn't had a whole lot of experience here at the sebring club layout however michelle lynn was talking about how she came to grips with with this track fairly quickly so we may have to keep our eyes on on the driver of the number 44 car between now and the end of tonight because i think she may be a driver to look out for to win yeah absolutely uh obviously it's setting a good time uh minute 17.9 so yeah it's uh you know uh i think another thing is is with the uh with the with the different track configuration you may get a surprise as to who's up top we've seen uh you know, our usual suspects that run up near the front week in and week out, and it may uh, catch a couple of drivers out. You never can tell. Now we see on the left-hand side of our screen with these SDK graphics, you can see the spec racer Fords that won't be racing here tonight. We apologize for that small old graphical error. We'll try and get that fixed between now and the start of this race. Hopefully we can get it fixed. If not, we'll just go through the, uh, the classes manually and uh, go through our live timing screens here. But still not a whole lot of time left to go here in the qualifying session. Don't have a whole lot of time left, but these laps are short. You can see Jay King there at the front of the Formula Ford still at a 108.225 here so very quick lap times for these drivers to negotiate again a very short track here at the Sebring Club layout so we're going to see quick lap times and another thing that we may need to keep in mind here with this race is possibly lap traffic playing an even bigger role than we've seen so far this season 
Uh, yeah, yeah, with his short laps like that, and uh, at least a uh, ten second or so uh, gap between those. Uh, you know, we'll we'll start encountering lap traffic probably mid part of the race, uh, and may catch them again before it's all over. You just never can tell. It's just going to be one of those races that we may catch some uh, some back markers pretty quickly, uh, and it may it may be fast and furious. And it's always it's always the added dimension when we're doing these uh, f- uh, multi class formula races is is uh, navigating lap traffic. Got to imagine, usually multi-class racing where it comes to the context of endurance sports car racing, that's usually quite hectic, and Sebring is proof of that going through turn number seven here on this club layout. That was a site of a big schmazzle towards the end of uh, last year's Sebring 12 when I think it was probably the top three or four in the GTP category just wiped themselves out in the dying stages of that 12-hour sports car classic. So here with multi-class open wheel racing, where the consequences of making even the tiniest bit of contact are a lot harder than it is in those uh, pretty tough, you must say, sports cars nowadays. So I think multi-class open wheel racing usually lends itself to a lot of chaos, but I think it's also pretty fun to watch as well, Charles. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, oh absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, it's you know, the difference between these cars and the, and the GT cars or the uh, the 10 tops, as we like to call them, is not a lot of room for air. You you get some wheel-to-wheel contact in these cars, and you, it, you're you just as likely to get wheel or suspension damage as uh, as you are of getting through safely. So it's uh, it's always a little bit of a crapshoot uh, when you're doing some uh, when you're doing uh, lapping or or being lapped. So we don't have a whole lot of time left to go here in this qualifying session. Coming up to about a minute left to go here, so it is crunch time for pr- plenty of these drivers, and I'll tell you at this point, it is currently at the top of the qualifying session. Jake King, the top of the Formula Fords, Miles Crabbe and P2, Mark Sherman there, P3 currently in the Formula Fords with not a whole lot of time left to go. Only five FF racers here. Yanchi Lin is that fifth, and he hasn't actually set a qualifying time so far. So hopefully we can see Yanchi on track. He is a fixture of both this series as well as a weekend warrior series of both Charles and I cover on the weekends here on Apex Racing TV. Those are always a blast. So hopefully we can see Yanchi Lin out there on track, maybe trying to do a last a first challenge. We'll just have to wait and see if he lines up on the starting grid in a few moments time. And currently in the Formula V's with about 30 seconds left to go here in this qualifying session, it's Michelle Lin at the front at a 117.964. That's a pretty good lap time from her. Andrew Love currently P2, and Brian Straczynski, who I may or may not have accidentally confused with Brian Belansky, the host of the Inside the SCCA podcast last week. I apologize for that. I will not repeat that again here this week. Both of them are a uh, very fine gentleman and also good racers as well. We're following Yanshi Lin, who is out there on the race track. I think he may be setting a qualifying time in the dying stages. We'll see if he's going to go for a sneak attack here going into that hairpin, the second to last corner here on this layout and probably the main overtaking opportunity that we'll see plenty of these drivers use here tonight. Yanchi Lin coming to the line. Is it going to be an improvement from the driver? We'll have to wait and see what lap time he sets. I believe it's not actually being uh, shown up there on our graphics, but Yanchi Lin jumped to third in the Formula 4s at a 109.7. So that's a pretty good lap time there from Yanchi Lin. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as we're uh, sitting here waiting for qualifying to end, I'm give a, you know, mentioned uh, Brian Belansky. I happened to catch uh, Mr. Belansky and our buddy Greg Ginsberg uh, caught the uh, the Hoosier Super Tour over the weekend, and uh, one Mr. Donnie Osley got himself a race win in the Formula Vs on Saturday. So congrats to him. Plenty of the drivers that we see here in this series are SCCA racers in real life. It's always good to see some in real life driver participation. You always love to see it here from the unofficial SCCA league, even though many SCCA drivers absolutely love being a part of the series. And we got an SCCA racer for 10 years ago. I just got... God, at this point, it was probably about a month ago, I got my form to uh, fill out to, to get my 10-year membership pin with the SCCA there. So I've been a part of the SCCA, albeit on the autocross side of things instead of the road racing for quite some time. It's a wonderful organization. I love being a part of it. And you also have a great sense of community with the SCCA. And we see that week in and week out here with this series. And I think we are in the dying stages of this qualifying session. The checkered flag has been at for a minute and 45, I believe, 
all the drivers have already gone back to the pits. I think we'll get the starting grid for you in just a few moments time from this first race of the evening. The Formula Cars at the Sebring Club layout, and I gotta imagine we're in store for a very interesting evening of racing action from start to finish. It's going to be, ooh, I think our uh, graphics may be a little bit screwed up here because I can see Stephen Blethen and Andrew Abbott. We, we apologize for the graphics. I think we may have had a small little uh, technical issue here. I'll go through the starting grid in both of these classes. Old school looking at the results in the iRacing session. Not a whole lot of time until we grab the green. It's Jay King, Miles Crab, Yanchi Lin, Mark Sherman, and Wayne Buttermore making up your field at the front of this field in the Formula Fords. And then in the Formula Vs, it's Michelle Lin, Andrew Love, Brian Straczynski, Raymond Blethen, Donnie Eiley, Stephen Blethen, Andrew Wozencroft, Seth Spolman, Trip Eiley, Jacob Schilling, Charles Vaccaro, Jim Brewster, Andrew Abbott, Josh Justice, Stevie Ray, Andrew Whitston, Gary uh, Kittle, and Joaquin Effinger, Tom Laurie, and Russ Lundberg running at your field. There are 25 cars in all here for this race. 19 Formula Vs and 5 Formula Fords. A packed field here with the Formula Class. You always love to see an absolutely packed field here, but with a lot of cars, we may see a lot of chaos here. Charles, are you expecting some drama on lap one? Well, I don't... Uh, yeah, probably. There's probably a little bit of drama. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Uh, maybe because we've got the new layout that'll uh, lend to the drivers being a little more cautious on the, on the out lap uh, as we get rolling and get the tires heated up. Uh, fortunately, I guess on the good side of that is, is there are only five Formula 4 cars. So uh, once the uh, once they, once uh, you get clear of those five, if you're in the Formula V, then you can get back to focusing on your on your race uh, and not having to keep looking in your rearview mirror waiting for a Formula 4 to come buzzing by. Alrighty, the field is set coming around the final corner here. They're grabbing the green. The Porsche pace car has gone into the pits and the drivers are on their way into turn number one. It's a pretty good start there from Jay King. Good start for Miles Crab as well. They're going side by side in the breaking zone of turn number one. However, Jay King clears him coming through that first corner. It's Yanshi Lin there in third and we'll see farther in the back. I believe all the drivers have gone through the first few corners cleanly. However, Tower Bend that we see the Formula Fords going through right now, I think that's going to be the big test of all these driver skills and mainly their guts as well to try and go for a move there into Tower Bend. We'll just have to wait and see. But Michelle Lynn, the driver that I said could be a driver to look out for here tonight, is leading the field, leading the Formula Vs as we see some chaos farther behind. I think that's Josh Justice going for a spin farther in the back as they went through turn six. Yep, just looked like he's got a little wide and caught that outside curve, which I think is uh, has been catching lots of drivers out, and, uh, and it caught him out. I think he actually caught him out in practice as well. So uh, luckily, nothing to hit, and he can continue on. Did see uh, what Charlie Vaccaro is already in the pits. Uh, that he fell back pretty quickly at the start of the race, so he might have had some contact with a, another car. So far, so clean for a lot of these drivers. However, I will say when you have the ying of the Formula Fords, which are very clean so far in this race, Jay King, Miles Crab, Yanchi Lin, Mark Sherman, and Wayne Buttermore making up the Formula uh, Formula Ford field right now. They have not swapped positions at all. Meanwhile, in the Formula Vs, we've seen the likes of Stephen Blethen move up positions. Jacob Schilling move up three. We have Andrew Abbott up five from where he started, along with Andrew Whitston there. So a good start for the Andrews in the the Formula Vs as they're cutting their way through the field like a hot knife through butter as things stand at the moment. We'll keep you up to date of the positions. I think we may have a, a, a big technical issue here that we have to sort out or may try and sort out here between now and the end of this. We apologize for it and uh, we'll, we'll push through as men do, we'll try and push along, and uh, I'll notice the fact that the likes of Seth Bowman and Russ Lundberg have already been in the pitch. Charlie Vaccaro and Niddle there as well are actually out of the race. I think we may have to take a look at some accidents that happened farther in the back. I was surprised that they went through the first few laps clean, but I think it may not have been the case for all of the drivers. A very uh, disor well, it was a very organized start, and then as soon as they went into turn number one, which is labeled as turn number two on my track map, 
I think iRacing may have the uh, the corner numbers and all that stuff mislabeled here on my uh, on my track map. But nevertheless, we're going to see a lot of battling all throughout this race, and I think we may be seeing a battle heat up at the front of the Formula Vs. I think that was uh, Tom Laurie maybe going for a move. Actually, Tom Laurie dropping back, so I think he may have been involved in some sort of incident. It was actually Andrew Love and Michelle Lynn that were battling at the front of the Formula Vs. Tom Laurie dropping back like a rock. I think he may have had some sort of massive issue hit him because just see him go through. I think he was running top five in the Formula Vs. Now he has cratered down to P20 overall. Yeah, he's he's dropped. Also, it looks like Blevins in the pits. Uh, Spolman, I think, dropped back several positions as well. Yeah, he's down nine. So uh, obviously some issues somewhere <laughs> in amongst all those uh, in amongst all that uh, fighting at the at the start of the race. So far, it's Jay King still leading this Formula Ford race, leading it overall. About a second gap between himself and Miles Crab, who I was thinking was going to challenge a little bit more with Jay King, but nevertheless, now he's being uh, locked steady in a fight with himself and Yanshi Lin, who just got the move done to move into P2. So Miles Crab, who I thought was going to be the one to challenge Jay King, is now at a risk of falling down to P number three. We'll see. Maybe Miles Crab slips a wheel down the inside, going into turn number six. I saw Yanshi. Yanshi Lin drifting his way through Tower Ben. Yanshi Lin, a driver, as I said before, that we see in the Weekend Warrior Series week in and week out here on Apex. And I remember he finished second in a rain-soaked Sebring race we had a few weeks ago. However, of course, here, different layout, much, much less track to work with here. And, of course, no rain here with this beautiful day that we have in the sim here at Sebring. And you can see already the field catching up to some lap traffic. So I think that is going to play a much bigger role here in this race. I was expecting lap traffic to really pick up around the 10 minute mark. However, less than five minutes into this race, we're already seeing it. Yeah, picking up a couple of stragglers there uh, on the, you know, toward the back. Uh, the main part of the field is still about 30 seconds or so ahead. So uh, probably a couple more laps before the starts, uh, the passing starts getting hot and heavy. Uh, and yeah, Yangshi is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm no, he's no stranger to me. I've been covering the weekend warriors for a while. And he basically just won everything there was to win in the SCCA runoffs last year uh, in iRacing. So very, very talented uh, sim racer, uh, especially in these uh, single makes, uh, the SCCA cars. You see Ooh, Jacob, Jacob Schilling. Off. Yep, going all through turn 10. Yeah, it looks like there was some contact with the car behind. Oh, that's uh, Stevie Ray, I believe. Yep, it's that uh that uh red uh metal uh, livery that stevie runs pretty easy to pick out uh looks like he had some uh like he got a little a uh, little assist from behind now looking at the front of the Formula V's, Andrew Love leads them at the moment. Michelle Lynn there still in P2. Brian Straczynski in P3. They've broken away and formed a little bit of a peloton here going through the tower bend here on this fifth lap. So I think as things stand at the moment, these three are going to be the ones that we need to keep our eyes on in this fight. All of them are very good drivers, very talented. And I think throughout the practice session we had earlier on this evening, all of them were at the top of the board at one point in that practice session. Session. So I think all three of them have a very good shot to take the checkered flag, the top of the Formula Vs. It's very early into this race, so we can't really call who's going to be the one to look at in that fight. However, I think in probably about four minutes time, once we reach, once we reach the halfway mark, I may have to throw that question at you, Charles. But looking at this fight here, farther in the back of the Formula Vs, this is Andrew Wozencroft in the midst of that as well. He's involved in a nice little fight between himself. That's uh, Blethen, Brewster, and Schilling involved as well. Actually, no, I apologize. I apologize. That's Abbott, Blethen, Brewster, and Wozencroft. Wozencroft at the tail end of that field, and he's going to be our camera car of this fight. It looked like they're near, nearly going three wide farther up the road here. Will they battle going into Cunningham? Yes, they will. It's going to be on the inside there for Andrew Abbott. He actually has to back out that move that he tried to pull off there on Raymond Blethen. So the pack right behind the top three peloton in that Formula V category is battling just as hard as they are for those podium in positions yeah they're really having a nice battle here i've been watching them over the last couple of laps and there and it's, uh, it's it's swapping the positions back and forth looking for good lines and you see a couple half times where they'll have to check up uh just uh, maybe misjudging it a little bit but they're having a really good battle and they're keeping everything clean uh, it looks like that um 
it's like it's going to continue for the next you know next few minutes of the race as we get a, a little look back here at yang chi lin so he's making the pass so he's heading with, into cunningham um, yep it's a battle with crab there and makes that move on the inside nicely done that was some textbook stuff there from Yanshi Lin. Didn't really push it too hard, and if we're being honest, he didn't really have to push it too hard. Yanshi came into the session. I don't think he set a practice lap time at all, so for him to come into the uh, session here, set one qualifying time, start this race in third, and move his way up into second is pretty good. However, he isn't closing up to Jay King. The gap is currently about 2.2 seconds here, about eight minutes into this race, and you can see now jake king catching up to the lap traffic slowly but surely so we'll have to see how the front three in the formula fords deal with this lap traffic will J king get held up will yanshi lin be able to negotiate them smoothly i will say the gap between lin and crab right now is practically nothing about two tenths of a second as things stand at the moment so i think we may see that battle between those two heat up once again we'll just have to wait and see how things work out for them now we can see king going around the outside there that's of uh that is uh, Rosencroft, I believe, that he went around the outside of. They're going through turn number seven, and we'll see him continue to blow these Formula V's metaphorical doors off as they go through turn nine, big bend, and go onto this back, not so straight, straight away. Yanji Lin threading the needle with this lap traffic, as is Miles Crab. Both of these drivers know that this is their opportunity to pounce, and I will say, with that lap traffic, J. King's gap has gone down from 2.2 mm -hmm. seconds to Yanji Lin to only one second, so I think may now be the time to pounce if you're Yanshi Lin, but also to uh, and currently it may be the time to pounce if your miles crab as a gap between those two is about a half a second as things stand at the moment now they're negotiating the top three in the formula v is currently led by michelle lynn you can see miles crab going around the outside of both of them as they go through collier bend of turn number three heading their way into four and five now and they all cleared them going through that section so now i gotta imagine it's going to be a heads up fight between lynn and king i think miles crab he played himself a little bit well with that lap traffic during that first part however once he reached the top three in the formula v's i think he actually hurt himself there yeah i think that th i think you're right i think it was uh, a little uh traffic traffic giveth and traffic taketh away and i think that was a that was a big case of that right there where uh, king lost uh, about a second uh in the first pack and then picked up about a half second back uh in the second pack as they were going through the lead group uh, we'll say this one thing that that uh one little aspect of the formula of these we always talk about is their uh, ability to draft and with this shortened track there's really not a lot of places where they can just get a nice toe so uh, the drivers that are that are stuck this close together are doing a really good job of racing each other uh and and nobody's getting away so it looks like they're pretty evenly matched drivers uh, so this may continue, like I said, for the for the remainder of the race. The draft is definitely much more reduced here, considering the two straightaways that we have are very important on getting a good exit going on to them. So I think that may be the reason why we're not seeing the 100 mile an hour game of leapfrog we usually see in the Formula Vs. But nevertheless, it is still an awesome fight here. Andrew Abbott is currently in the middle of that. He was battling with Raymond Bleth, and as they went through turn number two, just wasn't close enough to get the job done there. But it's still a very intense fight. And now Mark Sherman currently running P4 in the Formula 4 who we haven't actually focused on throughout a vast majority of this race. Running in P4, putting together a fairly clean and fairly quiet race as well. Hopefully not getting called out too much here by the lap traffic as he only has about a three second gap between himself and Wayne Buttermore. Definitely will not want him to get held up by that traffic too much and have that gap diminish for his sakes. He wants to have a clean run between now and the checkered flag, which is coming in about eight minutes time. So this race is developing quite quickly. As you can see, an absolute send there between uh, that was Jim Brewster going for a dive there on Andrew Wozencroft going into the hairpin was able to pull off the move successfully however that battle is continuing to heat up and we're going to take a look at a replay this was I believe of the send that Jim Brewster put on he was coming in like a bad out of hell you can see he has the red lights on on his dash and I think he was seeing the red mist here he was actually battling there uh, with Wozencroft as they went into turn two so just was able to clear him as they went into that corner however Jim Brewster very bold on the brakes heading into the hairpin yeah, absolutely. It was a very just late on the brakes and, and had a nice defensive line. 
Uh, it looks like he's, uh, yeah, so I thought that there was going to be a little bit of a gap emerged those front two cars because of their side-by-side -side between Brewster and, and Wilson Croft. I thought they were going to maybe get away a little bit, but nope, they've tightened it right back up, and it's back to a four-car pack. That's, this, I think, is going to be the main fight that we have to follow between now and the checkered flag. All these drivers still fairly close. I will say Wozencroft, I think, had a small little sideways moment coming out of turn 8, which is probably the most important corner on this entire racetrack, along with turn number 10. Now, we're seeing a battle heat up here. Wayne Buttermore in the Formula Ford is overtaking the uh, fighting front duo of Michelle Lynn and Andrew Love that are battling for the lead at the front of the Formula Vs there. Michelle Lynn has led laps. Andrew Love has led some laps as well. I think Brian Straczynski has actually broken away a little bit. He's fallen back of this fight, so we'll see if this two-car two pack that we have right now turns into a three-car pack before everything is said and done. You can see that gap is fairly expansive there, so I think Brian Straczynski may be in uh, no man's land between now and the end of this. Meanwhile, the battle continues here. That's Raymond Blethen, and he was going side-by-side -side with Jim Brewster heading through Co uh, Cunningham Bend there, and actually Brewster gets a move done to move into p10 overall and move into the top five spots in the formula v's yeah that was uh yeah brewster was basically right behind uh Blethen for the last few laps and uh and has uh, dispatched um Wolzencroft a little bit and now it looks like he's just coming in got a nice little run here there's a little bit of draft involved in this not a lot and it looks like he's going to see what he's going to do here is he going to take it to the inside no, it just stays outside and just, yeah, nicely done. I think it was just basically just got a good run, stayed on the outside and carried his momentum through, um, through Collider there and made a great pass. Nicely played there from Jim Brewster. Nothing too flashy, but he still got the move done regardless. This is a fight that we haven't paid attention to throughout this race. This is Josh Justice at the front of it. Andrew Whitson there in uh, the middle of that fight between himself, Justice, and Schilling. So these three cars, you can cover them with a blanket, and we may see them start to battle as they go onto this. Uh, oh, boy, and then making contact there. That's Andrew Whitson spinning like a top and hitting Ooh. that outside tire barrier as they went down the start, uh, the start finish. Not so straight straight away there Andrew Whitson with a damaged car and he's going to have to tow back to the pits and we're going to take a look at a replay to see what in the world happened I think it was maybe the slowest crash that I've ever seen in the history of this series these Formula V's are not oh. fast race cars however oh that was bizarre there was, was a little bit of contact I think maybe maybe a little code. bit of net code yeah, yeah net code I think may have been the reason why Whitson went spinning like a top into the wall yeah Whitson he he basically moved over into into Schilling's line uh, and made a little contact, and then uh, iRacing's net code kicked in and uh, sent him around uh, and into the wall. But I was going to say, nice recovery by uh, Justice. You know, he had that early spin on the first lap and has recovered nicely just to, to get back up and is inside the top 10 for his class. I gotta say, a lot of drivers are putting on some pretty good drives right now. Andrew Love is one of them. He's still leading the Formula Vs as things stand at the moment. However, Michelle Lynn is going to be in that draft and may have a good run going down the start finish straight away. We'll just have to wait and see. Andrew Wozencroft is locked in a nice fight going three wide. Going on to the start finish straight away. We'll see if these three drivers get through this turn clean. Cunningham is usually pretty sketchy going single file, let alone side by side. You can see there it catches at some of those drivers. A little bit of contact there with Brewster and Raymond Blethen as they went through Cunningham Bend. However, they got away with a clean, which is a little bit surprising because any sort of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact in really any sort of open wheel car is usually going to end in tears. And considering it was, uh, I think it was rear right to front left contact between those two, they got away with it shockingly clean there, Charles. Yeah, it was a nice job by both Wozencroft and Brewster because during that sequence, they were both riding the curb far more than I think they probably wanted to, uh, but they both managed to hang on uh, and keep the car headed in the right direction. Now, they've lost uh, Abbott, unfortunately, so they're going to have a little bit of work to do if they're going to try and get back up to him. Uh, and uh, and this, and this But they're still locked in that three-car battle, and it'll probably continue for another uh, three minutes or so. 
still got a lot of racing action ahead of us and I, I think actually I was going to say that the Formula V's were the class act but you can see a fight here in the Formula Ford's Miles Crab going side by side with Yanchi Lin bow the last late breakers heading through the hairpin Miles Crab absolutely sent it in there broke quite late and still pulled off the move successfully however it's not over yet going side by side as they go through the Fangio section here with a lap traffic to negotiate as well they'll get out of their way here so Yanchi Lin and Miles Crab are still going to be locked in a nice fight here going through Cunningham about to enter Collier Bend in just a few moments time here and I gotta imagine these two are going to be the ones that we need to keep our eyes on between now and the checkered flag they've been battling hard while Jay King has just been driving off into the sunset he now has a five and a half second gap between himself and Yanchi Lin and P2 so Jay King is just absolutely driving away with this race but Yanchi Lin is not driving away from Miles Crab those two separated by about three tenths of a second as things stand at the moment meanwhile farther back in the Formula V's. Joaquin Effing are involved in a nice fight here with Donny Eiley as they go through Tower Bend. They get the move done successfully. Mm -hmm. That's a nice move from Donny Eiley in the number one cars. They went through Tower Bend. Yeah, very nice move. Very, you know, very straightforward, but got the move done. Take it to the inside make the pass, uh, and they'll continue on. Uh, but probably two laps left in the race as uh, watching the battle still between Blevin and Rose and Wolzencroft, I'm just watching them on the timing tower, just back and forth. Yep, they are side by side, uh, coming down into Collier, looks like. Pretty close Ooh. together. This is actually, they're heading into Cunningham now, so oh, we'll we see go. these two. Go side by side here. Now Blethen on the inside gets a move done there on Wozencroft, but still not over yet. Wozencroft looking to do the switchback. Now he's going to be stuck on that outside and actually backs out that move as they went through Collier Bend. However, it still may not be over yet. I think Andrew Wozencroft may go for a mo uh, go may go for a dive, may go for a move. Going into turn number five wasn't close enough there, and actually dropping back just a teeny tiny bit. We'll see. I think he may be consolidating his move for a run going down Big Bend and heading into that hairpin going through turn number eight i mentioned earlier on in this broadcast that that inside curb is absolutely deadly that's one of the most important corners on the racetrack because you're going on to that probably the longest flat out blast on this entire racetrack and going into the best overtaking opportunity so if you get a bad exit out of turn eight which it looks like raymond blethen has you will be a sitting duck to a driver like andrew rosenkoff now trying to go for a move around the outside heading into the last corner i believe they may be taking the white flag this time by it's going to be borderline here as they start to oh, battle no, here. No, no Raymond Blethen going for a spin. I think he made contact there as he went for a move down the inside of Andrew Wozencroft as he went through the hairpin. That's heartbreak for Raymond Blethen who put together a fantastic race. Sadly for him, he's going to drop down like a rock currently running P8 in the Formula V's as things stand at the moment. The, uh, the time has run out. So we're going to be taking the checkered flag this time by and we're going to take a look at a replay of what's happening farther in the back. This is Jacob Schilling being involved in a nice fight between himself and Josh Justice and I I think this may have resulted in some sort of contact. Oh, you can see there Raymond Blethen rejoining the track there. So we can see that he lost out on that fight. So that's unfortunate for Raymond Blethen to drop back like a rock throughout this field. But meanwhile, Jake King, he's put together a practically flawless race. We haven't touched on him too much, and that's because he has just absolutely driven into the sunset here in the Formula 4s, negotiated the lap traffic beautifully, and has pulled himself about an eight-second gap here. He's going to come around Fangio one last time, and he's going to see that checkered flag jake king in the number 39 formula ford he's going to take the victory here in the formulas overall and in that formula ford category it's going to be close between yanshi lin and miles crab there for p2 and p3 in the formula fords yanshi lin takes second crab there in third i think we may have to touch on the fight in the formula v's it's still not over yet it's going to be a drag race coming to the line michelle lin going for the move down the inside at the last possible opportunity side by side coming right to the line i think it's going to be close and I think it may have been the love wow. there that prevails in that fight. That had to have been the matter of just a couple thousands of seconds. Yeah. Michelle Lynn coming oh so desperately close to P2. But he got to give both of them credit for putting off a fantastic fight the front of the Vs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that looks like the uh, uh, timing and scoring says it was one hundredth of a second between those two cars at the, at the finish line. Ooh, that is... 
that is just about as close as it can get here in this series. We're just seeing some more of the drivers uh, coming to cross the uh, start finish line. Jake King actually come and I think he'll probably pull into the pits here in just a few moments time. That was a nice fight there for Jake King, it must be said. And I think of the Formula Ford races we've done ever since the start of the last season when these Formula cars became a fixture here from the Ray Esports Racing League. That may have been one of like two or three times that we haven't seen Zach Rivard just pull away with a victory. That's because Zach Rivard didn't Not actually here. show up, but still <laughs> plenty of talent in this field. And Jay King proving that when uh, when Zach Rivard and his absolutely indomitable force isn't here, Jay King is going to be the one to look at in those Formula Fords. That was a, a very masterful drive, it must be said, from the driver of the number 39 car. Yeah, great run by him. I think that uh, he got the benefit of being out front and could uh, dictate his uh, passes in traffic. Uh, Lynn obviously uh, locked in with Crab. And then you, so you've got a, 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 a in, in class battle along with uh, trying to do some uh, multi class navigation, and it just they just kind of lost out, but they end up with uh, second and third in uh, class and overall. I think we may try and look at the results. Hopefully, the technical issues we've been having won't affect these too much. We'll Hope to see these. Well, actually, no, they work just like a treat. There we go. So it's Jake King there. Front to overall, they're 7.6 seconds separating himself and Yan Shi Lin at the end. That is even more absurd when you realize that he only had a one second gap once they dealt with that lap traffic in the midsection of that race. So Jake King putting on absolute clinic here on the field. Yan Shi Lin in second and Miles Crab rounding at the Formula Ford podium there in third. That's Mark Sherman and Wayne Buttermore, the bottom of the Formula Ford drivers. That's Andrew Love and Michelle Lynn with a fantastic photo finish, finishing P1 and P2 in the Formula Vs with Brian Straczynski running at the Formula V podium in third. That's Andrew Abbott in ninth and Andrew Wozencroft P10 overall. Yeah, P in P11 uh, is uh, Jim Brewster, and I believe that's uh, sixth in class. Jacob Schilling in 12th, uh, Josh Justice in 13th, Raymond Blevin in 14th, Stevie Ray 15th, Donnie Isley in 16th. Joaquin Effinger in 17th, Stephen Blevin in 18th, uh, Seth Bowman in 19th, Andrew Whitson in 20th, Tom Laurie, Russ Lundberg, Trip Isley, Charlie Vaccaro, and Gary Kittle round out the, uh, the 25 cars that were on track and the 20 cars in the Formula V class. That was an absolutely awesome race, and one of the battles that we saw throughout a vast majority of that was a fight for the win in the Formula Vs, and the driver that came up oh so close was Michelle Lynn. I see her waiting in the interview waiting area, and we'll drag her in here to have a quick little chat before we wrap things up for the first half of this broadcast. Michelle Lynn, thank you for joining us here in the commentary booth. Commiserations coming up so, so close to the victory there in the Formula Vs, but how was it out there? Oh my god, it was such a fun race. Um, this is my first time I've ever raced at this tr or this configuration. I've done Sebring before, but it's just real slidey, and uh, it the the formula of uh, these are just so much fun on this track. And I had such a great, 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 great battle with Andrew. Um, I I could have gotten around him several times, but I'm like, you know what? He's fast enough. I'm going to stay in second place, and on the last lap, I'll make a pass. That didn't work out, but I I certainly tried. I'll tell you what, you went for the move at the last possible opportunity, came up a little bit close, however, if that start-finish line was, I think, probably 100 feet farther down the road, that would have been your race there, but you mentioned how this track was new to you, and I was actually uh, talking about on this broadcast how I heard you say in practice that even though you're new to this track, you got into the groove fairly quickly, so would you like to elaborate on that? Um, It's the kind of track that you basically just kind of break late, trail break a little bit, get the back end of the uh, the V around, and then just drive the oversteer through the corner. Um, and I, I have like a real good setup. I've spent a ton of time setting up the V so that it does basically whatever I want. And uh, it it's perfect for Sebring. That, that, that The setup was so perfect that that, ride, that drive was actually pretty easy. Uh, the, the toughest thing was just making sure that I didn't break too late and run right into the back of Andrew because I've done that before. So. I'll actually ask you a little bit about the setup. Uh, obviously, running here at Sebring, but on the club layout, completely different from the normal setup that you'd usually run at the full layout of Sebring. So, what were the main differences when it came to setting up the car for a track like this? Oh, I don't know if I want to give out my little secret. Um, 
don't, <laughs> you, you can yeah. keep your secrets to yourself. Just yeah, I think I'm gonna hold possible. on to that one. Sorry. <laughs> Alrighty. I, I can't really blame you. I know in the uh, the uh, preseason Thunder race we had here from the Ray Esports, some people were asking about my setup when I was running in the Pro Mazas, and I kept that very close to my chest. Like, and you gotta have the poker face when it comes to the setup here in these cars. So, Michelle Lynn, we usually don't see you in the other cars, so I think probably the next time we'll see you out here for the Ray Esports series is going yeah. to be when the formulas return at Summit Point in a few weeks' time. So, how do you fancy your chances there? Okay, so... Um... I, I raced for 20 years in real life. I did uh, Formula Juniors and Formula Fords, and the two tracks I raced on the most were Lime Rock and Summit Point. Um, so I know Summit really well, but I usually find the tracks that I'm really like familiar with to be detrimental because I push too hard and I get a little bit of red mist. Whereas on a track like this where I, I really don't know it that well, I kind of lay back and drive smarter. So um, I'm hoping I just stay out of trouble at Summit and, and then you know see where I end up. Well, as the old saying goes to finish first, first you have to finish. Exactly. Michelle Lynn, thank you. Yeah, Michelle Lynn, <laughs> thank you for joining us here in the commentary booth. Is there anyone that you'd like to thanks to or shout out? Um, I just wanted to thank Stevie and Jim. I mean, they, they both do so much for these series. I also run with the Weekend Warriors, and it's just such a great group of people to race with. And like, honestly, they are so fast. Everyone in this group is so, so, so fast. And also a shout out to Megan. Uh, I, I miss her. She's uh, got a different work schedule, but uh, I feel like a lot of people in the Weekend Warriors, uh, we all want her back. So definitely. Um, but that's about uh, it. I think I think we want her back here on these Ray Esports events on Tuesdays as well. Hopefully we can see Megan Overstreet come back in the not too distant future. Michelle Lynn, thank you for joining us here in the commentary booth. We hope to see you in two weeks time at Summit Point on track and probably in the YouTube chat next time out at Daytona. Thank you for joining us. All right, thanks, guys. Bye-bye. And that was Michelle Lynn, who finished P2 here in this race. A dramatic formula race, it must be said, here at Sebring with a, a bit of a unique style of racing compared to what we usually see here from the series. And Charles, just final thoughts on that formula race we just saw here tonight. Oh, yeah, that was a great race. It's like I said, it's a, kind of a new layout from, from most everybody, but uh, made for some very quick laps and lots of action. And lots of great battles up and down the field so yeah it was fantastic to watch of course with the fantastic racing we have it wouldn't be possible without the fantastic sponsors you heard from sim motion earlier and i think we should probably talk about trailbreak.com the sponsor of the formula v's in the world of racing telemetry telemetry is important in understanding your car and your driving hence why many people in the market take their butt on over to trailbreak.com trailbreak is a leader in the racing data world since 2000 considering that's four years older than me i can vouch that's more than enough time for them to build a fantastic catalog of products so whether you're in the world of karting autocross road racing hill climbs or track days or something there to help you go faster so you can go to trailbreak.com to find out more trailbreak.com is a sponsor of the formula v's and one of the proud partners here of the ray esports racing league and we've got some more racing action coming up for you in just a few moments time the spec miatas are going to be on track for the first time here this season and i hope you can stay tuned for that after these messages
Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS. Alrighty, welcome back everyone here to Apex Racing TV and the Ray Esports Racing League. This is round two of the season, part two of tonight's broadcast here with the Spec Miatas. Now, I will say there has been a change of the classes. It used to be us running the MX5 Cup cars. Now we're running these Spec Miatas, which are actually legacy content here in iRacing. And if I'm being brutally honest, I don't have a whole lot of experience driving this car. I have plenty of experience driving the MX5 Cup cars, which I think were introduced into the real world back in like 2016 I believe these are from 2010 so they're a little bit on the older end when it comes to cars here on the iRacing platform up there with the Pontiac Solstice and some of the older uh, rookie to C-class uh, road racing cars in the very early days of iRacing back when I was a wee little lad in elementary school however I got an opportunity to drive these cars in a preseason thunder race from the Ray Esports Racing League a couple weeks ago one week before the season opening broadcast we had last time at at VIR and I will say these cars are a little bit tricky to drive the gearing is a main thing that was uh, kicking my butt a little bit so to speak me being a um, I, I guess I fall into Gen Z being only 19 years old I guess it would be the old stereotype of typical zoomer doesn't know how to drive stick but it was tricky actually getting into the gears I'm used to just blipping the throttle in most cars uh, with stick here in iRacing however with these uh, with these MX-5 cup cars well with these uh, spec Miatas, I should say, getting the terminology correct. It's a little bit hard to go through the gears. Now, Charles, you mentioned in the small little chat we had that you weren't very familiar with these cars as well. However, you are very familiar with the Miatas, so you said that we may get these uh, the same kind of racing. Do you think that's going to be the case here with the spec Miatas? Oh, yeah, I definitely think so. I think if, if when you're talking about generational differences between cars, as you said, probably gearbox is a little uh, a little older, a little less refined. Uh, it's probably a little bit slower overall. And uh, it's probably just a, you know, everything's a little worse <laughs> what you would see in the in the current uh, current MX5. So still gonna be uh, side by side wheel banging uh, some good racing because these guys aren't gonna just uh, just roll over. Uh, so we're gonna get we're gonna have a good race. And uh, we'll be watching. Obviously, we're back on the club circuit again, club layout. And uh, so, obviously, short laps. Uh, so, it should be interesting. I'm just looking at the lap times. The lap times are basically comparable to what we were seeing with the Formula Vs. So, uh, that should make for some interesting uh, interesting racing during this 20-minute uh, race that we're going to have. 
And it's also quite close as well. You can see Yanchi Lin at the top of the board with about three minutes left to go at a one minute 15.984. He's so far the only driver to break uh, below the one minute 16 threshold. Currently only 20 cars to set a qualifying time here. I say only 20 cars. I think we may be spoiled a little bit with a weekend Warriors broadcast here on Apex Racing TV where we've got upwards of 30 and even like a 35 car field is considered light for that category. But still here, we're with the spec Miatas here from the Ray Esports Racing League. 20 cars is still a lot, and at this track, which is pretty much a, um, a an oversized go-kart track, so to speak, I think 20 cars lap traffic is still, it's not going to play a role in this race. However, traffic is going to play a big role here in this qualifying session, so I can imagine in the dying stages here with about two minutes left to go, we're going to see drivers make some big leaps on that board. Will anyone challenge Yanchi Lin? Uh... I mean, yeah, there'll be a couple of guys. Obviously, uh, Skip Brock is up there. He's only a tenth off. So uh, Tom Lurie's having a good run. A couple of tenths back as we're on board with him now. Like, he's got a pretty good handle on the car. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, Yangshi is a great driver, but, uh, you know, we, we've got a we've got a, a really good field that come out here and race this week in and week out. So uh, there'll be some battling. I mean, Yangshi may may get away a little bit, but uh, I see that there'll be several guys out there wanting to reel him back in. And Skip Rock has reeled him in. He's now at the provisional pole here in this qualifying session with about a minute and a half left to go here. He's jumped ahead there to go P1 in this class. The driver, the number 68 car, currently P1 here in this qualifying session. The second of the drivers to dip below that 1 minute 16 threshold, and he's just parking it on the outside there of turn number 4 here on this club layout. I think we may have a little bit of uh, confusion. I mentioned during the, uh, the formula race that we had earlier on this evening that the the iRacing track map is a little bit screwy. I think it may have the start finish line about a half a mile away from where it really is. It has it coming out of Fangio of turn number 11 when in reality it's coming out of um, well I, I'm trying to think of what corner number it would be on the actual track, I guess it would be turn number nine, right before Cunningham of uh, turn number one here on this uh, club layout. That is the first corner here on this track, so may have to uh, to talk to iRacing and have them rearrange the track map. I can't really blame them for having it a little bit out of date. It's probably not used by anyone here, and I think if I tried to look up the Sebring club layout track map, I think my Google would probably explode trying to find any sort of results on the entirety of the internet trying to find a track map yeah you're probably right uh as we as we talked about you know as you mentioned in the first race the, this layout's really not used that much uh like i said indycar used it as a practice uh, a practice track um and so you know they're they're gonna, they're they're not going to be looking for a uh, some guy with a flag it's going to be basically closed track con conditions and they'll just time it where they want to so uh yeah, it's, um, you know, once again, this is probably, you know, these cars are probably one of the first cars that was on the iRacing service, to be fair, along with, uh, as you mentioned, the Solstice and uh, maybe the Spec Racer, maybe a couple other ones. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, if, if it's a little off, that's fine. We'll be able to figure it out as we uh, find, as I see Barney in the background waving the flag for the end of qualifying. So uh, it's in the same spot it was in the first race. So we should we should be able to locate it pretty easily. And Yanchi Lin has now topped up to the top of the board in the dying stages of the session, jumped up to the top of the board. I should say he was on his final flying lap and he was absolutely pushing it. Had a little bit of traffic to deal with as well. However, that traffic, I don't think held him up in the corners more so it punched a hole in the air. I got to imagine these spec Miata cars are going to uh, drift just as well, if not maybe even better than their Mazda MX-5 Cup car compatriots. We'll just have to wait and see how the racing is here at at Sebring and I think if these cars drift beautifully it's going to be absolutely awesome for Daytona in one week's time speaking of hit the subscribe button notification bell to never miss a thing here on Apex Racing TV because we've got some great racing here from the Ray Esports Racing League up in store from you and we're still waiting for some more cars to finish off this qualifying session the checkered flag has been out for a minute and a half and I think I should probably shout out well the other sponsors here and that is Grassroots Motorsports the sponsor of the MX-5s but for true sports car enthusiasts Grassroots Motorsports 
Motorsports has one mission in mind, to be your personal guide to the sports car world. Whether it be online at grassrootsmotorsports.com, in print, or at the track, the racers, mechanics, and car nerds at Grassroots Motorsports will take you behind the scenes of the racing world and teach you how to improve your car. To become a part of the story or just read what's going on in the sports car world, head on over to grassrootsmotorsports.com, the proud partner here of the Ray Esports Racing League and the sponsor here of the Spec Miata as a qualifying session. I believe may or may not be over, and I think we should probably take a look at the starting grid from this race, and it's going to be, oh, I think the starting grid graphic may be messed up a little bit. We apologize for that. I'll go through the starting grid anyway, just looking at the results here in iRacing. It's Yan Chi Lin at the front, Skip Rock Jr. there in second, Tom Laurie in third, Miles Crab in fourth, Andrew Wilsoncroft in fifth, Charles Vaccaro in sixth, Scott Russell in seventh, Seth Spullman in eighth, Mar uh, Mike Taylor in ninth, Rich Green in P number 10. That's Raymond Blethen and Stephen Blethen locking out your sixth row. We've got them locking it out there. And that's uh, Joseph Tarantino in P13. Lucky number 13 for the driver of the number five car. That's Mark Sherman, the driver of the number 18 car. Starting this race in 14th, St uh, Stevie Ray, the series admin, will be starting this race in P15. That's Rick Wachone, uh, Josh Justice, Wayne Buttermore, Joel Camilleri, Joaquin Effinger, and Jim Mayer rounding out your field. Only 20 cars set a qualifying time. Jim Mayer did not in the number one car. However, he did set a time in practice, so hopefully we'll see him out on the grid here. He set a fast slap time in the practice session of a 115.940, which actually would have tied him with Skip Rock Jr. for P2 in that qualifying session. So if he is starting this race in P21, I gotta imagine we're going to have a fantastic storyline of him to follow in that number one car. But nevertheless, where you can see the drivers rolling through the hairpin, the final real corner here on this club layout before they go into Fangio. This is going to be an interesting race, and I gotta imagine the hairpin is going to be the main overtaking opportunity that we saw used in the formulas. It'll carry over here to the MX-5. Just waiting for a few moments. I need to catch my breath. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think, we'll, I think you're right. Sorry to cut you off there, Charles. The green flag is down. The drivers are already on their way. We'll see if they can get through lap one clean. I think we may have been spoiled with that clean start in the formulas. We'll see if the MX-5s are clear here as well. It's a good start there from Skip Rock Jr. He's going to lead them coming through turn number one. However, Jan Lin is still within striking distance to try and go for a move here in the not-too-distant future. Meanwhile, looking farther in the back, a lot of drivers have already shuffled. And the top three of Yan Lin, Skip Rock Jr., and Miles Crab have already broken away a teeny tiny bit. We'll see them close up with the draft in the not too distant future. Touching on Jim Meyer, I said that he was going to be a storyline to look at for farther in the back. He's now moved up to P14 there, so the driver of the number one car stored this race in 21st, technically 20th, considering I believe Taylor in 21st currently in this race did not actually take the start. So Jim Mayer currently running P14 in this race is cutting through the field like a hot knife through butter, and we're not even a minute in here, Charles. Uh, yeah, that's so uh, very interesting. You, you mentioned his uh, practice time would have been put him around P2 uh, on the qualifying grid. And, uh, you know, just kind of looking, you know, we always say that uh, I race, our, the I rating system does not necessarily indicate uh, how good of a driver you are. And uh, he's already up to 13th. Uh, and uh, he, he's not the highest rated driver out here. He's not the lowest, but he's not the highest either. And he's, uh, he's absolutely showing that he's got some uh, really, really good pace. When you can see some shuffling all throughout this field, I believe the Blethens are involved in a nice little battle right towards the tail end of the top 10. That's Raymond Blethen currently running in P8. We're following Jim Mayer there, and you can see how close he is to the rest of the cars, and I think there may be a little bit of damage on the I front so. end of that MX-5. I'm going to try and take a closer look here in the not too distant future to see if there is but it didn't look very promising it didn't look very promising for Wozencroft as I think he had a major moment coming out of Tower Bend and nearly lost out on multiple positions I believe he lost out on Charles Vaccaro there to fall out of the top five and also nearly lost out to Scott Russell who are following currently running P7 in the number 22 car the driver out of New Jersey in that very striking MX-5 we'll see him try and cut through the field meanwhile the top four have broken away they're forming their own nice little peloton here 
breaking away from all of the chaos right behind. So they are, I think, probably some of the most comfortable drivers on this racetrack right now. Skip Rock Jr. still in the lead, and we'll see Raymond Blethen getting involved in a nice fight. That was Spolman trying to overtake him, but now Spolman is getting passed by Rich Green. So Spolman went for the move on Blethen, heading through the hairpin, and sadly for him, I don't think it went to plan as we see him dropping down the order now down to P11. That's not ideal for the driver of the number 12 car. We'll see if he can recover. Yeah, I'm just was talking about Mayer there with the with the front end damage, I already see Camilleri in the pits. I wonder if we looked at his car, if we've got rear, rear end damage on his car, if that might've been the uh, cause of his extended uh, the extended pit stop. So uh, it's interesting, but he's still obviously not really, not really affecting too much. He's still moving up the order. He's up to P12 and he's working on P11 right here. And he gets the move done successfully heading through the very strange turn number six. I think we may uh, try and find a replay of some of the drama that happened farther in the back. We've got this replay loaded up. I believe this is a replay of Mayer here. And unfortunately, it's a little bit glitch from my end. Can you see it, Charles? Yep, I got it. Yep. That's just we're coming up on the, uh, on the uh, pace lap. He's already looking to the outside, to the far right, and makes a really good jump. And uh, yep, makes contact with. Uh, is it? Yep. Yep. Look like yeah. Um, as uh, Josh is sitting here talking to us in his ear, may have been a jump start on his part, but obviously I think if it if it had been, then he would have already um, he would have already been black flagged and sent to the pit. So yeah, yep. As there was Barney right there. So yeah, he waited to the very to the perfect time and it looks like that might have been stevie ray that he made contact with as he was working his way up through oh you do not want to touch bumpers with a series admin that is not an ideal way to start your race but that was borderline i think that was a that was, that was a good grab from our uh, producer josh as we're having a small mm -hmm. little technical issue here but that was a good grab from him to uh, to notice that it was a, a fairly abrupt start it must be said from jim meyer but he gotta you gotta admit the guy has had a pretty good start to this race even with the damage on the front end of his race car currently up nine spots which is head and shoulders above the rest of the drivers looking through josh justice currently running p13 is up four positions from where he started raymond blethen is up four from where he started currently running this race in p number seven and skip rock Jr. is up one position and may not seem important, but he is still leading this race over Yanshi Lin. And these two have actually broken away from Miles Crab and Tom Laurie farther behind. So they are breaking away from the rest of the field, forming their own Peloton. And I think at this stage, once again, they may be some of the most comfortable. However, they're still battling, heading through Cunningham of turn number one. Yanshi Lin tried to go for the move down the inside. Now he's going to be stuck on the outside. Coming through Collier Bend, who's gone back at neither one of them will actually. Yanshi Lin pulls in behind a Skip Rock Jr. to get that uh, unsuccessful attempt and overtake done but still not over yet you can see you can still cover both of these cars with a blanket it's a, it's a matter of feet separating them now not tenths or seconds full-on seconds here it's just feet and inches separating these drivers as things stand at the moment we're only about five minutes in a little over five minutes into this race now coming up to six now but still very early stages of this race and there's already some fantastic storylines Jim Mayer continuing to charge up through the field now up to P10 as you can see uh, Russell and Spolman battling farther up the road he may try and pick those two off in the not too distant future I think them battling coming through turn number eight slowed them down like a rock going on to this back not so straight straight away coming around turn number nine of Big Ben we'll see if he can get the move done now trying to go for the move around the outside of Scott Russell heading into the hairpin it's gonna be a battle list late breakers who's going to back out here Mayer stuck on the outside and now you can see their contact being made Ooh. between Mayer there and oh major Whoa. Oh, accident wow. farther behind that's blethen going off as is rich green smoke pouring from the rear tires of all of these rear wheel drive mazda mx5s and wow very much a um i think it was a racing deal we'll have to take a look at a replay to see what in the world happened there between all of those drivers i think it all started off with rich green may maybe trying to go for a move on mayor there so mayor tried to go for that move on russell and it didn't really work out for him and then rich green ever the opportunist tried to go for the move on mayor but he can see there a little bit of contact being made i think that got rich green oh oh no i was actually josh justice with a bad bump there to the back of stephen blethen i believe it was that started off and kicked off that accident uh yeah it just was really strange it looked like the like, like as you said it's uh was uh 
mayor, uh, I think, really kind of choking that up as he was battling uh, with Russell there, and uh, maybe just tried to maybe try to make a defensive move that just didn't quite pay off. I think he was trying to uh, work from the outside in, and uh, there was already a car in that spot when he got there, and uh, that uh, caused a little bit of a, a little chaos moment there. And uh, you, as as it sometimes happens, the uh, people that start the accident are the ones that finish it uh, as we had several cars behind uh, get shot off the track and spinning and crashing into things. Ooh, the battle is still continuing here between Skip Rock Jr. and Yan Chi Lin. They were going side by side yet again, coming to the first two corners on this racetrack of Cunningham and Collier. And it's still Skip Rock Jr. holding off in that fight. The driver of the number 68 car started this race up towards the front. Looked like he had the pole for quite some time. However, Yan Chi Lin snapped it at the last possible moment. However, Skip Rock Jr. has led for a decent chunk of this race so far. We're coming up to the halfway mark and not a whole lot of time, about a minute and a half left to go and until we reach that 10 minute mark so i think at this stage of this race these two are going to have to take a little bit careful because i see miles crab and tom laurie right behind them sniffing around and possibly willing to pick up the pieces if these two come to blows going side by side into the hairpin yanshi lin look for the move around the outside it would have been a bold and maybe overly opportunistic move if he tried to get it done there on skip rock jr just wasn't close enough meanwhile farther behind andrew wilsencroft is it's a nice little fight between himself and and Charles Vaccaro, I believe, so we'll see these two maybe battle here in the not too distant future. They're covered by about not a whole lot. I think it's about three or four car lengths separating them as a start lap eight here, so we'll just have to wait and see what that fight turns into. Meanwhile, Skip Rock Jr. and Yan Chi Lin still incredibly close. I gotta imagine that these two are going to give it absolutely everything. Some of the best racers here in this series. They know each other. All these drivers know how each other race, so they can push each other to the absolute limits and i think we'll be seeing that here from both of these drivers here i think you're absolutely right yeah and young if uh you know he's got to be he's got to be very wary if he if he goes for a move he's got to get it cleared before they get uh into the corner he's got to get that uh move done and dusted because the longer these guys battle side by side those uh those second two uh crab and lori will make up that ground very very quickly and make that a four car battle for the win uh, as opposed to just the two as we see them side by side going down into the hairpin it looked much better for Yanchi Lin this time. He's still on the outside of Skip Rock Jr. as they exit the hairpin and go through Fangio. And you can see the cars slowly reeling them in. Miles Crab is going to be a factor in this fight in the not too distant future. They're still going side by side. Starting lap number nine, I believe, here. So 10 minutes here in this race already. 10 minutes already blown by for these drivers. And there's still a lot left to be decided. Miles Crab, who hasn't really touched both of these drivers for for the matter of about five laps is now back in it and i can imagine with how hard yan Shi lin and skip rock jr have been battling all throughout this race i gotta imagine miles crab may be within a good shot of grabbing the win here he's a very cautious driver he's a safe driver he doesn't really make mistakes and he is there to pick up the pieces if his rivals come to blows so i think miles crab is definitely in the discussion here of getting the move done to move in front of any of these drivers it's yan Shi lin at the front Skip Rock Jr. in second and Crab in third as they go onto this back straightaway here at the end of lap nine. We'll see if any of these drivers are close enough to go for a move. Miles Crab seeming to be a little bit slow, maybe just had a bad exit coming out of turn eight on this lap. However, Miles Crab not closing up as much as I was expecting him to, going down that back not so straight straightaway. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think he's uh, I think he's playing it patiently and uh, just giving other guys plenty of room to race. Uh, and not wanting to get involved in uh, any instance that may happen in front. So he is, he's, uh, he's there, and he's being patient, and he's just watching for his opportunity. And meanwhile, we've got a fight for the final top 10 position and right behind it as well. It's a very hard fought between Stevie Ray and Mark Sherman. It looked like they were nearly going to come to blows as they came out of the turn 10 chicane was close enough. Stevie Ray with a very messed up rear end of his race car, I think, may try and get yes. another shot of it. A lot of cars with damage. There's Jim Mayer with that front end damage that he picked up at the very start. And that was the car that gave Stevie Ray that contact. Mm -hmm. You can see that rear bumper. I guess that would be the rear right corner 
of Stevie Ray's car. Looks like it's giving Mark Sherman's car the wink as he drives along the track. It is very strange looking. It looks like a clay model that wasn't entirely set. Then he whacked it with a hammer. So that's what Stevie Ray's car looks like. But he's still running in P11. We'll see if he tries to get a move done here on Josh Justice in the not too distant future or if he falls back into the crutches of Mark Sherman in P12. Yeah, he's, he's doing a good job. Obviously, that's not like uh, it's not a it's damage, but I mean, it's not an aerodynamic disadvantage uh, to have that that in the right rear. Uh, it doesn't look like he's got any kind of wheel suspension issues. So he's just running his race and uh, running in P11 just outside the top 10 as uh, we're watching back up front with uh, the leaders, uh, Lynn in front, uh, Brock in second and Crab in third. Crab's still hanging in there. He's about a second behind these lead two uh, as they are uh, still battling up front. I think the last time I remember uh, us talking about Skip Brock was in a SRF race last season at Homestead. <laughs> he basically came from uh, about seven tenths of a second back on the final straightaway to win the race from P3. So uh, obviously is a accomplished driver and he's gonna give Yonkshi everything he can handle. Well, it's another race here under the Florida sun. We'll have to wait and see if we have a similar finish here and see Skip Rock Jr. take his first win of the season here in the first race of the Spec Miatas here from season 12 of the Ray Esports Racing League. They're still close, but not close enough for Skip Rock Jr. to go for a move. However, he closes up quite a lot there in the braking zone there. Beautiful stuff there from Skip Rock Jr. to go so deep on the brakes, heading into the hairpin of turn number 10 and still get a woad up in time to not make contact and and still maintain that gap quite nicely exiting the corner he's slowly railing him in usually i'd save a quote like this until after the broadcast is done but i think these mx5 cars race a lot better than the formula cars at this track and that's bold of me to say considering i'm usually more of an open wheel guy than a tin top but still these mx5s have put on a pretty good race so far and i gotta imagine between now and the checkered flag coming in about five and a half minutes time the front three that you see right now are definitely going to be lockstep in a nice fight miles Crab actually dropping back a teeny tiny bit, but as you said, Charles, I think he may be playing the long game and waiting to save up his stuff for an end of the race assault here. I think of the top three, any of these drivers can win it. Who's your money on, Charles? Uh, I, you know, if I do that, I'm going to end up uh, giving somebody the old commentator curse there. But I think, I think any, any of these three are capable of uh, of winning, and uh, it's going to be very interesting. And it may just be a uh, a last lap pass that takes us out. It looks like uh, Brock is is staying with Yonkshi, but not really putting a lot of pressure on him. Uh, just kind of, like I said, uh, maybe playing a little long game himself as uh, we're looking around here. We're back down to P7 with Ray Blevin. Sitting there right behind Charlie Vaccaro. Looks like he's caught up to that group of, of Vaccaro and Wozencroft uh, as, um, as um, they're battling him from P5, P6, and P7. Bowling Crawford looks like he's got a nice little lead, and we got back to Mayer, who's now up 12 positions in P9. Yeah, I think Mayer has hit a complete... Yeah, I think he's hit a wall in terms of him making his way through the field. At the very start, he was cutting through like a hot knife through butter. However, as his field has spread out, currently the top 10 spread out by about 26 seconds. So as the field is spread out throughout this race, Mayer just hasn't been able to cut through the field. I was going to say in the early stages that he'd be within a fantastic shot of even finishing in the top five, but I think with a bad four minutes left to go here in this race, not a whole lot of time left on the board P9. Maybe what Mayer has to settle for, of course, this is racing anything can happen and we're seeing uh, some nice racing here this is i believe that's russell there in p14 getting challenged here by rick was shown in the number 74 car looked like he was going to try and go for a move as he went through the first four corners to start off this lap however rick was shown there still right behind the number 22 we'll see if these two start to battle when they go on to this long straightaway that we see josh justice on now he is holding that final top 10 spot but just barely any air set Separates himself and Stevie Ray there for that final uh, spot there. And then Mark Sherman right behind in P12. I think all three of these drivers, although they aren't cl as close as we see in other fights throughout the field, I think these three are still within a pretty good shout. All of them very good drivers, very experienced drivers as well. We can't talk anything bad about Stevie Ray because he basically holds our jobs at a balance. So we'll say, <laughs> I mean, Stevie Ray, he's a very nice guy. I've got a chance to talk with him quite a lot. And he's also 
also a very good racer as well. So we'll see him maybe try and challenge Josh Justice in the not too distant future. He's closed up that gap quite a lot, but didn't have the best exit coming out of turn number one of Cunningham. So we'll see if Stevie Ray in the number 11 car currently running in P11, if he can try and buck that trend of the matching car number and position between now and the end of the race, which is coming up very quickly, Charles. Only two and a half minutes left on the clock. Yeah, just getting close, and they in the in the front two trying to drop Crab a little bit. He's down two and a half seconds now behind this lead pack, and I'm gonna have to get with Stevie Ray about his uh, uh, leaving his wireframe turned on in his uh, paint. So we'll, uh, we'll we'll shot him about that a little bit later. Yeah, well, I'm not really good when it comes to eye racing paints. Every single eye racing paint I've tried to make on my own it's enough to burn out your retinas folks i think i'll just leave it at that so stevie ray with a uh, a unique looking car so to speak still running in p11 actually lost touch with josh justice who i think may have made a mistake and he's closed up right back to him so i think this fight between mm -hmm. josh justice Ooh. and stevie ray is going to heat up going side by side going through fangio we'll see who can prevail in this fight stevie ray Pulling ahead, he has that fantastic run coming out of the hairpin. The hairpin is probably the second most important corner on this club layout. I mentioned turn 8 earlier on in this broadcast. But if you get a bad exit coming out of turn 10, like Josh Justice just did, you are going to be a sitting duck coming to that start finish line. I think that's just what caught him at here as Stevie Ray moves up into that final top 10 spot. Yeah, he has. And this whole battle start is uh, is kind of tightened up. Uh, Mayer is caught up. Just, he's only about a second and a half behind Spolman. Uh, and then uh, Stevie Ray's right behind him, and then you've got Justice and Sherman, and that's going to be a nice five-car fight here in the last couple uh, couple of minutes. This is going to be pretty cool here. I can imagine the viewers watching the stream here on Apex Racing TV are at the edge of their seats. We only have about a minute left on the board, actually 45 seconds left on the clock, and it's still Yanchi Lin leading this field, and Stevie Ray, the last of the drivers, running in the top 10. We've got a whole lot of fights left to be decided, a lot of positions left to be fought for. Josh Justice is still close to the back of Stevie Ray. We'll see if he gets a much better exit this time. I think fairly even keel, and I think Josh Josh Justice got another bad exit as he came out of the hairpin, so I think maybe he may be at a slight risk of losing some time. Not position to Mark Sherman, though, unless Sherman goes for an absolutely outrageous dive heading into turn number one. Meanwhile, Yanchi Lin, they are on the white flag, so Yanchi Lin uh, rounding his way around turn number eight for the final time. He really needs to focus on having a good exit there because if he had a bad exit, he is going to be a sitting duck to Skip Rock, who's about four tenths back at the start of this not uh, so straight back straight away here three tenths now closing 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 will skip rock jr go for a move here in the dying stages of this race i think he just isn't close enough Yan Shilin, try and get a good exit pal you don't want to go the way of josh justice and end in a pool of steam here and meanwhile we're looking at jim mayer who just disappeared from our screen briefly got abducted yep. by a ufo there going down the start finish straight away and Ooh, mayor goes for a spin coming through turn number Ooh. one and stevie ray nearly t-boned him there so that would not have been ideal for either of those drivers yanchi lin is one skip rock jr finished in second miles crab there in p number three miles crab finished quite a long ways back so i think he, he i mean he just dropped back like a rock in the late stages of that race still finishing on the final step of the podium it must be said still good race from uh, crab there in the number 131 car but still a little bit shocked that he dropped so far off the back of those front two yeah maybe just a minute a case of what looking back at the lap times and i think lid and brock just basically turned up the wick there for the last five laps and uh and uh crab just couldn't couldn't match the pace uh dropped back a little bit but still got a p3 out of the race and so it's a great race you know when you can finish on the podium and uh and you still have all four all four tires on the car. The car's in the proper configuration. So great job by him. Uh, as we uh, are looking here with um, the replay there, uh, pretty standard, nice little um, finish with uh, Lynn and Brock. Uh, Brock just didn't really have anything for him there at the end, but great racing by those two guys up front. 
I think that was fairly cut and dry when they went through the breaking zone of turn number 10. Skip Rock Jr. didn't go for an outrageous end, and Yanshi Lin didn't have a terrible exit coming out of turn number 10, and that's what decided that fight. These two are still quite close on track. I actually think they're actually going pretty quick, even though all the cars have taken the checkered flag. Mm -hmm. Only three retire, actually, no, two retirements from this race. Uh, I believe the other last of the cars, last of the 21, uh, didn't actually take the start of this race. Only two retirements from this race. It must must be said I was expecting a little bit more carnage than we really did see here so the Ray Esports drivers always being clean and respectful and treating this track with uh, treating this track with kit gloves we heard from uh, we heard from Michelle Lynn earlier on in this broadcast how she was taking a little bit easy and how she felt that her chances at this track a track that she was a little bit uneasy at maybe better than her chances at Summit Point coming up in two weeks time here but still an interesting ride of must be said here from the Sebring, Sebring Club layout, the first two broadcasts, well, the first one broadcast, the first two races I've ever called here at this track, and I will say it's an interesting one for sure. We'll have to see mm -hmm. whether or not gets picked up here in future Ray Esports seasons, but uh, that ends it here from the MX5 race. I think we'll go through results from a, um, a much more melancholic, it must be said. However, still, I think a bit more exciting than the Formula's fight here in the MX5s. And it's Yanchi Lin grabbing the win in the Spec Miata's Skip Rock Jr. there, only three tenths behind in P number two. And Miles Crab about six seconds back of your winner, Lin, there uh, in P number three. Then Tom Lurie. Put together a pretty quiet race. He finishes practically no man's land in P number four. Then Andrew Wozencroft putting together a good drive. He finishes this race in fifth. That's Raymond Blethen, Charles Vaccaro, Seth Spolman, Stevie Ray with a pretty good P9 result there from the series admin. And Josh Justice running at your top ten. Yeah, and uh, P11, Mark Sherman, uh, Jim Mayer had a great run. Had that little spin at the end. Still up uh, nine positions to finish P12. Joe Tarantino in 13th, Scott Russell in 14th, Rick Wishon in 15th, Wayne Buttermore in 16th, Rich Green in 17th, Joaquin Effinger in 18th. Uh, Joe Campbell did get back out on track after the uh, uh, early issue and had to pit uh, to finish 19th, only two laps down. Stephen Blethen, uh nine laps down in 20th, and uh, Mike Taylor did not take the start. And those are your results here from the first Spec Miata race of the season. It was Yanji Lin grabbing the win. Charles, would you like to have a chat with our winner from tonight's race? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's bring Yanji in here. Yanji Lin, uh, race win tonight. Congratulations. Uh, really good battle with you and uh, you and Skip for the entire event. Yeah, that's right. I, uh, what is it? <laughs> I, uh, Shifted to the wrong gear at the start. It just uh, let's get by, and uh, the racing this car, let's say, is a little bit. Dip it's very different compared to the newer master. It really took me a lot of effort to try to get the run on skip. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, about the comparison between uh, this this model and the new and the uh, latest version. So uh, a new car for you guys, and a new track layout at Sebring, a little shorter. Uh, so, uh, 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 probably a little bit of a learning curve there. Uh, no, really. I mean, it's not a new car for me, and it's not a new car for Skip, neither. <laughs> but, uh, I, I just uh, competed in that um, racing prodigy tournament. Um, mm. I really built up a lot of experience in this car over there. But, um, and uh, okay. I didn't get to uh, be fast enough to be considered a racing prodigy, but uh, it has certainly helped me today. This car um, is very momentum-based compared to the new car. The new car is a lot lighter, it's a lot stiffer, and uh, mm -hmm. so has more power than this. You really can use some uh, sports car uh, driving technique in it. But this car is more like um, like those traditional club racers. You really have to carry a lot of momentum through the corner. And also, um, the front tire wear of this car is like unbelievably high. Even in a 20 minute race, um, I had to uh, nurse the front tires a little bit. Well, that's interesting information. That's, yeah. that's going to be something we'll have to keep a, keep an eye on during the season. Yeah, I mean, I, I built a custom set on myself because uh, I really had enough of driving the baseline. Um, <laughs> the setup I built was pretty much entirely focused on uh, using at least front tires as possible, but um, still. Uh, having a lot of uh, front tire wear in the end. 
All right. Well, Yongshi, uh, congratulations. Thanks uh, for stopping in and talking to us. And uh, we'll catch you at the next race. Yeah. See you next time. Thank you for right. broadcasting. Yes, sir. Have a good one. You as well. That was Yanshi Lin who finished this Spec Miata race at the top of the running order and will bring in another driver here, the driver that was locked steady in a fight with him throughout this entire race and that is Skip Rock Jr. We'll drag him in here. Sorry, we probably cut you off there yeah. in a conversation. Skip, I apologize for that. But Skip, thank you for joining us here in the commentary booth. A interesting meeting, so to speak, here with a new car here from the Ray Esports Racing League and a new track layout as well. So just talk us through this very bizarre meeting here at the Sebring Club layout. Yeah, it is a little bizarre. I know that the Spec Miatas have raced here at one point. I saw a video of someone racing here in a real Spec Miata. But uh, yeah, it's a car I'm very familiar with. Uh, I use it to train for real life. I drive Spec Miata in real life. I'm just coming off of a weekend at VIR that didn't go great for me. So I'm glad that this race went a little bit better. Um, and yeah, the layout the layout's a little strange, but I mean, you're, there's only really one new corner and you just have to remember it's there. Sometimes I almost forget and go right through it trying to do the main course because I've done the main course many, many times. Well, we kind of mentioned at the very uh, start of this broadcast about how that um, weird, I guess it would be turn number six, at least according to the iRacing track map, that turn to make this layout the club version instead of the full layout. Was that a very hard corner to get right here? You know, I, I don't think it is all that hard just because you can feel your way through it. it. You can use a lot of the apex and you just kind of eyeball it. I didn't really have a braking marker or anything. I'm not that familiar with the corner, but it seems like I was doing all right. So I can't complain. Well, I think this track is, well, comparing the two tracks is like comparing apples and oranges. Next time, at it's going to be at the Daytona Road Course in one week's time, pretty much. Nothing like Sebring, despite being in the same state of Florida. So what do you think that race is going to be in one week's time? That race is going to be nuts. I love that track so much. And in these cars, it's going to be uh, crazy because of the, the draft and everything. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Skip Rock Jr., thank you for joining us here in the commentary booth. Put together some pretty good races there. Came up just a little bit short on taking the checkered flag in these Spec Miata cars. Thank you for joining us here. Is there anyone that you'd like to give a thanks to or shout out? Yeah, I always give a shout out. Uh, both of my parents are usually watching. Sometimes my sister's even watching. Uh, so shout out to the family, the the, the fans, and, uh, and my real life racing team, OPM, with uh, Tom Fowler. Alrighty, Skip, thank you for joining us. Hope to see you next time out at Daytona. Thank you. That was Skip Rock Jr. who finished this Spec Miata race in P number two, and will bring in another driver who's in the podium positions in the Formula race earlier on in this evening, and that was Miles Crabb. We'll drag him in here. And Charles, would you like to have a chat with him? Oh, sure. Absolutely, Miles. We'll bring Miles in here with his uh, with his P3. Uh, Miles, congratulations. You, you, you had to work a little hard to get through... Uh, a couple of guys, and in the end, uh, you know, Yangshi uh, brought up the fact that this car is uh, pretty harsh on the front. So, is that the reason you may have started falling back toward the end of the race? Uh, that was part of it. Um, I definitely overdrove it at the beginning of the race. I, you know, this is such a unused car now, and it's so out. Of, it, I had to reprogram my brain for what power model it was on. And yes, it, <laughs> you will destroy the fronts if you stop it with the brakes, and I was doing that for about the first five laps. And then I stopped myself, and I caught back up to them when they were battling, and then um, I was kind of just going, I, I feel like I should be able to catch them, not just break even. So I started trying different gears, and I messed up the hairpin one time. They got more than a second and a half away, and that was kind of it. And yes, I, I the last three laps, I fell off the cliff of front grip. Um, well, there you go. I, we were wondering, because there was a, you and I think another another driver that seemed like they about, you know, half to three quarters of the way through the race just kind of hit a brick wall, and that was about all you guys could come up with. So, uh, you know, the next uh, next race is uh, next week at Daytona on the road course. Uh, I've seen enough of the uh, the current MX5 <laughs> race there that uh, I expect this to be uh, basically, uh, you know, 10, 10 car train uh, for about 20 minutes. Is that is that kind of what you're looking at as well? In this car for sure, and the spec racer maybe even more. Um, yeah, I forgot the next week was Daytona, which is... <laughs> arguably the track I have the most time on in the service and most time on, it just it's one of my favorite tracks to drive so um yeah that's going to be a draft pack that's going to be four wide going into the bus stop try to survive um 
a lot of straight. That's that's going to be like twelve laps, I think, in these cars. Anyway, yeah, yeah um, just got to get back in the groove of this car. It'll be nice to have a full hour and a half practice beforehand, and uh, remember that in this tire model, the grass might actually have more grip than the asphalt. Um, <laughs> I did my fastest lap when I like just bailed on the the shortcut and went through the grass and then like picked up two tenths doing that. I was like, well, that's yeah. that's interesting. That that is, that is that is an interesting piece of information. Well, Miles, congratulations on your P3. Is there anybody you want to thank? Yeah, thank you. Um, hi Jessica, hi Mom, hi Ren, and whoever else in the group chat is watching. Sorry, I didn't run Yanchi off the road to win the six or finish second, sixteen hundred. Um, I'm getting real tired of finishing third in all these races. Um, thank you all for broadcasting. Thank you, Stevie, for putting it on. And thank you to all the sponsors that make the pay for the broadcast, pay for the hosted sessions, all that good stuff. All right, Miles. Good, good, thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. That was Miles Crabb joining us in the commentary booth. And he mentioned the sponsors that make this series possible. And we haven't touched on one of them yet. And that is the Inside the SCCA podcast, which is a fantastic podcast for all members of the SCCA, whether you're in the road racing side of things, whether it be track night in America that tickles your fancy, or whether you've been in the autocross scene for quite a long time. That's a fantastic podcast to listen to. It's part of the Racing Wire podcast network and available on all major podcast platforms. New episodes of that show drop every Friday so you can listen to it on your way to the racetrack and i think we may have to listen to that a little bit uh before the next race at daytona because i am itching to get to that race daytona with the spec racer fords and the spec miatas that is going to be a foster cluck so to speak charles <laughs> what do you think that race is going to be like in one week's time i, I think you're absolutely right it, you know these these cars are going to draft really well the spec racers are insane in the draft we saw it last season at homestead you know where they were gaining seven eight tenths of a second just down the straightaway or through the nascar section of the course uh daytona is just going to be it's basically two-thirds of the nascar track and some infield so it's going to be it's going to be craziness and it may be it may be four wide most of the race and if there's still four cars left on the track they'll be four wide at the line uh, for the for the finish, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so it's going to be a very it's going to be a fun race, and if you if you like watching these cars, that's going to be one to tune in for for sure. Daytona is going to be absolutely outrageous in one week's time. If you want to stay up to date and catch that broadcast, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss a thing here on Apex Racing TV. And you also won't mix, uh, you also won't miss the Weekend Warriors series that Charles, Josh, and I do every single Sunday here on Apex Racing TV. Those series are awesome as well. They're great to commentate as well. So if you like the action that you saw here tonight, you'll love the action on Sundays here on Apex Racing TV as well. But as for this broadcast, I think that just about does it. So for myself, Ron Mullins, Charles Michelle joining me in the commentary booth, and Josh Wilkie working all the cameras in the virtual production hauler, who may have exploded after I said the word Fuster Cluck, I think we'll say so long here from the Sebring, Sebring Club layout, and we'll see you all again in one week's time. Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS.